So we're going to be doing a deep drop today out in the continental shelf. We're using one of these Dawa marine powers. It's a fair way down, about 450 meters, so we'll be using a, about six kilos of lead. And on that lead, we run about 80 to 100 pound mono, just to a swivel. And that's just a breakaway safety. If your sinker does hook the bottom, at least you can break, it, break that away. You don't lose your whole rig, you know, and the price of braid today, there's about 800 meters of braid on there, 130 pounds. So we want to be rather losing our sinker than most of our rig and some of our braid. We come up just above the sinker. We've got 300 pound mono all the way through. We did try and use lighter hook traces as a safety, but we actually ended up breaking hook traces and bending hooks. So, so we go to a, a really good quality, substantial hook. That's a 16-0 mustard circle hook. A bit of um, glow tubing, as much light as you can get on your rig as possible down there. Generally 450 meters down, it's pretty dark, so nice big bonito head, lots of oil, lots of flesh, so good smell on the bait. New South Wales fishery allows us three hooks, so we go three hooks on our rig, and then we put a water activated strobe light on the top of that rig. So basically just we're just trying to attract as much attention to that rig as possible. Once it gets down in that darkness, that strobe light does a really good job of that, flashes different colors, and then just rigged straight onto a 280 pound snap clip. Wind on leader to give us a little bit of shock absorption. There's a possibility that we do get three fish on at a time and that little bit of extra shock absorption helps the, the gearing of the reel and just keeps it safe. So that's our rig. We'll have a drop. The way the technique will be to do this drop is we'll drop one rod first. We don't want to get in a tangle so we'll actually physically drive the vessel away from that rig. Once we get clear of the rig, we'll drop the other rod and spin the boat around and spin the boat around just slowing the current. We're fishing in about two and a half knots of current, so we have to get up above our mark, above our waypoint. We'll have our drop and try and time our drift so that our baits get down to the base of the ledge or the bit of a showing that we've got on that ledge at the same time. We get there and hopefully we can catch a bite and, um, and show you what a blue eye Travella or a bass groper look like. We're getting the boat in position. And now away we go, 400 metres down the bottom. You want to let it rip, Roderick? Yeah, just let it go, Let mate. it go? Yeah. The main thing is here that you don't tangle the rig on the way down. Obviously, two or three drops is about all you're going to get in a day. The other thing too on these drops, you've got to really work with the, uh, the skipper. You need someone just driving the boat forward. Roderick's just positioned at what? Just over the, over the ledge have you, Roderick? Just coming up to the ledge now. We'll basically just let them go. Once they hit the, once they hit the bottom, you'll see it. Yeah. Just take the slack up and then I'll start backing up, just trying to slow it down. So we're just going to drift in the current when we're down on the bottom. You're just going to keep it up so it just pushes it back up That's against right. the yep. bait. Come up, just one, best groper. Yeah. Look at that. That is awesome. <laughs> 20 kilo bass groper. And the whole idea with using these mustard circle hooks is is on your electric reels or even a deck winch or a big you know big reel some guys do actually you know manually fish in that depth is you're going to have massive belly in your line so you're not really going to be striking those fish on you're actually going to be winding them progressively tight but when you push that lever over your electric reel starts taking up your slack or your deck winch or you know or your, your manual winding reel takes up the slack progressively so so that, that fish comes up, they eat that bait, and then as it pulls tight, that circle pulls nicely into the corner of its mouth. You generally hook them all in, the, in, the, in either side hinge of the mouth, and when that fish is coming up for a long depth, you're probably looking at you know, a winding time of anything from 15 to 25 minutes, depending on the amount of current, how much fish you got on, and how fast your reels are. And there's a lot of strain on those hooks throughout that retrieve. So you want that hook to make as small a hole as possible, and be secure in that mouth. If you hook them fairly deep and you know in any soft parts of the mouth, 
that fighting all the way to the top will probably, you know, tear a big hole in that fish's mouth. You'll end up losing that fish on the way up. So the circle looks are really the key to that catching those bigger fish. We run a big GeoNav sound here with a two kilowatt transducer so we can see fish as well as structure in the deep water. As we run over the area, I'll just see where the life is sitting and I'll mark the life on my GPS. We run an 1198 Hummingbird and as we run over the, over, the, over the area we want to fish, we'll see where the ledge is, where the fish sit. As we pull up on that life, we'll do a dummy drift. When I say a dummy drift, we'll just drift to see which way we're drifting with the current and at what speed we're drifting. As soon as we work that out, we'll drive back up to our mark. We'll try and estimate how far up ahead of our mark we have to go to get our baits down to the bottom. Bearing in mind, you've got about a four to five minute waiting period for, that, for, that, for, that, for your rig on that electric reel to get all the way down on the bottom. It's a fair way down to go 450 meters. So as we drive over this ledge, we saw, we marked some life here earlier and I've just come straight back onto the mark on my GPS. And I just want to make sure that there is still life there. Really important to have a good sounder for this type of fishing. Just dropping randomly out here in the middle of the ocean is, is fairly aimless. So if you can see the fish on your sounder, you'll be fine. And as soon as you get a bait to them, they'll bite. So you can see that ledge coming up there. That's the pressure point. The current will be hitting the ledge. So that's where a lot of those fish will be sitting. And then it comes up and there's a ledge here. And you can see there's a little bit of life just starting on the bottom there. Bearing in mind that we are in 430 meters of water, so you won't have big showings of fish. And that's the key really. Good instrumentation, and then linking up your sounder with a good GPS system that lays a track line, and then basically just becomes a case of driving up above your mark, having a drop, drifting, it, drifting those baits through the fish. If you have a twin screw, a vessel or even a single screw vessel you can back up just reverse up slightly just to slow that drift down and as soon as you get your bite start winching away and that's basically the deep dropping we do we'll troll around until we find some laugh and then we'll have a drop on it and that's how we catch them You can actually hear the braid crackling under the pressure of, you know, that, that whatever we've got on here is, is putting on this gear and that reel's handling it amazingly well, you know, she's just basically cruising up. And this is a, a fairly seasonal type of fishery. It, the current looks after it a lot during the summer months because you can't fish out here with so much current. So we're fairly limited to fishing for these fish over the winter months. And when we do, we we, they, they're big fish, so we only take a few of the fish that we need at a time. There's a bag limit of 10 per boat in New South Wales. Two gem fish and a total of 10 fish. So, But, you know, the size of the fish, once you've caught three or four of these fish, that's enough for a feed. So we catch a few and then we leave, and that way we sustain the fishery. 340 metres to go, so we might be a while. Go and put the kettle on and come back and see what we've got later. <laughs> That's what a bass groper looks like coming out of 450 meters of water. It's Bill Classen here from The Fishing Show and if you like this instructional video and want to learn more, it's simple. Go to fishingshowtv.com.au and see a whole host of additional videos.